Hello everybody and welcome back to the Nick's Aviation YouTube channel and today we have a very interesting video so you may remember me doing an airline tier rating video thing a while ago and I realized that I left out a bunch of airlines that I have actually flown plus I was able to fly some more uh, airlines since then so today I'm gonna go into a little bit more of depth of about when I flew these airlines and rank them from S to D S is obviously the best it's superior to other people other airlines and uh, D is obviously the worst so we have the list of airlines that I have flown all the way at the bottom here and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot now starting off I want to say if you haven't already joined the discord the link will be in the description below go ahead and join it because it's a nice community where you guys can share your thoughts and opinions on things and just chat with other uh, aviation enthusiasts like myself so getting straight into the video the first airline which is over here also ignore this because well you know I had a PDF that was not supposed to be there and somehow it ended up in this tier list <laughs> so uh, I don't even know why I had that in my computer but here first we have Air Canada Rouge right, so Air Canada Rouge is the low-cost vacation subsidiary of Air Canada that operates uh, vacation flights a lot of the times to the Caribbean uh, and also around the globe they used to have a fleet of Boeing 767s which would fly sometimes in the US which I got to fly to Phoenix a couple of times which was absolutely amazing I loved the 767 one of my favorite aircraft ever uh, and then they had also a lot of transatlantic routes that were kind of smaller and things that really like wouldn't be operated by the mainline Air Canada fleet. Like for example, a route from Toronto Pearson to Venice was operated on the 767-300ER of Air Canada Rouge. At the moment, they have a complete fleet of 38 Airbus aircraft. All of them are within the, Air the Airbus A320 family series. 20 are Airbus A319s, four are Airbus A320s, 14 are Airbus A321s. All these aircraft are currently parked because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and actually they will soon be uh, receiving another Airbus A320. They still have one on order and have started to phase out the Airbus A319. So I have had the chance to fly on everything that has ever been in the Air Canada Rouge fleet from the A319, A320, A321, and 767. I've only flown Air Canada Rouge when I was going into the United States, I believe. I don't think I've flown them domestic, but I have flown on just about every Air Canada Rouge aircraft that, well, yeah, I have. And I have to say, one, it's not low cost. It is a very expensive subsidiary of Air Canada. And for example, WestJet is cheaper. Uh, with the exception of a Thunder Bay route, which I might want to take in the future, which is 60 bucks, which actually it's not that bad for like a one and a half hour flight. But honestly, the service was amazing. They treated me really well. They actually, they gave me free food when I was flying alone as a minor. And the food was actually really good. They had wraps. Uh, that were chicken wraps and they were really good and when I was flying on the 767-300ER uh, I remember my flight from Toronto Pearson to Phoenix Sky Harbor they gave me a free iPad for the flight because there's no in-flight entertainment screens uh, on the aircraft so you either have to purchase a um, an iPad or use the Air Canada entertainment app which honestly sucks so to be honest Air Canada Rouge has treated me great, but there are some things that could be better. So along with all those great times, I also had some negative experiences with Air Canada Rouge. Some were actually of my own doing. I ate a uh, margarita cheese pizza once before getting on a flight, and it's the only time I've ever thrown up on a plane, and it was actually in the doorway a minute after I asked the flight attendant for a barf bag. So that whole story I'll, I'll have fun with explaining in another video maybe, but for all those reasons, I'm going to give good old Air Canada Rouge a B. So next, we have Flair Airlines. Alright, next up we have 
Flair Airlines. And you can already see the smile on my face because I have had an absolutely incredible experience with Flair Airlines. So I'm actually gonna explain what happened because it started off really negatively. So uh, the when I went to book the flight, I booked a first row seat for business class. And because it's a bulkhead seat, uh, people were not adults, so people who are minors can't actually sit in the seat. When you're 14, which I am, you are actually considered an adult uh, when it comes to travel and uh, flying with an airline. So I was talking to, when I got to the airport at Pearson in, I think it was like 6 a.m. You guys, this was actually in the trip report. I didn't, I didn't mention, I think I mentioned the check-in experience after, but it was not a very nice check-in experience. It took me about half an hour. I was all, I, I got really stressed that the, board, the boarding was gonna close because it was actually like 10 minutes from closing. I arrived well in advance and uh, they gave me a aisle seat somewhere near the back of the aircraft. And I'm like, what? I paid for a business class seat and they're like, you can't sit in the bulkhead, you're a minor. And I'm like, actually I'm considered an adult. So they don't know their own policy. So I went through the Flair Airlines website and checked all their policies to see if I could sit there. This was even before actually I booked the ticket. And I explained to the person on the phone as well when we had to go through all that when they called us. So I discussed that with the people and then they ended up giving me an aisle seat and then I said, come on, I had a window. They gave me the window. They were really nice and they, the crew were just so nice and they were very apologetic and actually I really appreciated how they handled that because when I, I did that, they didn't give me any reimbursement but they treated me like gold when I was on the aircraft and I don't know if this is just like, airlines in general but I was treated so well and it just it 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 was so nice and although there isn't anything really special about what's on board like they have they have a menu but sadly uh, because of COVID-19 I can't blame them that they don't have service during COVID-19 but regardless without the service I had an incredible experience on Flair Airlines and they just they made me feel really great and on top of that there's a picture yeah, I got to sit in the cockpit of a 737-800. So this this picture and not that one. Yeah, that's a picture that I took on board. Um, and that picture, they will both be on my Instagram if you guys want to go check it out. At Nick's Aviation, link will also be in the description below. So yeah, I had a really positive experience. The legroom was great in the bulkhead and even in an economy class seat. I'm 5'7", and there was ample legroom in the economy class section and for an ultra low cost carrier which charges 80 bucks to go coast to coast basically that's pretty damn good and i mean they don't have as many things as other airlines do this is personally my favorite airline so so the way that they treated me and actually the service on board i felt was really good even without the menu with the one exception of in-flight entertainment. Personally, I had an incredible experience on this ultra low-cost carrier of Canada, and I know a lot of people might disagree with me, but I'm gonna put them up here in the S tier, which it's kind of strange with the low-cost carrier being in the S tier. So next, we have US Airways. So, a little backstory on this. So, me and my mom, we used to live in Baltimore. Baltimore, Maryland in obviously the United States. And we were very close to, I believe, I think it was, yeah, it was, well, we had BWI and then we also had Reagan and Dulles around us. And once on a one-off, we managed to fly to Miami on a US Airways A330, uh, I think it was an A330-200. So I don't remember much about this experience. I just, I remember that the cabin was very, uh, uh, it was like, it was very old, especially for, you know, like, I don't know how long ago it was, but it was very outdated. The IFE, the IFE was okay. Um, I just, this didn't really stand out to me in any way. And sorry about that. Uh, and, <laughs> I just, I didn't have the best time on it on US Airways. I mean, the A330 is an incredible aircraft, but 
US Airways, it was kind of, I just, I kind of remember it being like a shittier American Airlines in a way. So, I'm sorry, but I have to give US Airways a C. Next, we have United Express. So, I've only flown United Express that I'm aware of twice when I was going from Toronto to Montrose in Colorado with a stopover in Denver. Uh, actually, I got to fly on the Embraer uh, 145, uh, and I remember it just being a super fun flight. It was a very short flight, and for a regional airline, they offered us drinks. I, I remember I they also handed out like a snack and it was very it was good but not, it didn't really it didn't really stand out to me in any way and it, it was a very positive experience but not really standing out so I'm gonna give it a solid B up here with Air Canada Rouge. So next we have Aeroflot. Yes, the flag carrier of Russia. I have flown in Aeroflot. Uh, I've flown a, I think it was, yes, it was the Airbus A320, and I've also flown their, I believe it was a Sukhoi Superjet on a substitute for another A320 on the Paris rotation. So, the Sukhoi Superjet was super loud, regardless, it was, they, they gave us a full meal on board, and it, it was delicious, it was incredible, and... You know what, for, for this, I actually, I think I have to move Flare down to A so I can put this to S because Aeroflot, like, the food was just incredible on board and they gave me a pouch that had a bunch of toys and it had like puzzles in it and I had it all throughout my trip to Moscow and it, it just warmed my heart to, you know, to be, to be on, a, on an aircraft and airline that, that cared that much about their passengers and it was just an all-in-all -all incredible experience great food and everything like that next oh boy air canada the airline that i fly the most and the flag carrier of canada so now we have air canada so i have flown air canada the most out of any airline that's on this list and i've flown in their business class uh, I got to go in their premium economy once, and I've also flown tons of times in their economy. So currently, Air Canada have a fleet of a total of 163 aircraft, of which I've actually flown, I think, all except two aircraft that are in their current fleet. So I have flown their Airbus A319s, I have flown the A320, A321, their A330s, their triple sevens, the the 200 LR and the triple seven 300 ER, and I've flown both the 7878, 7879. Uh, I've flown everything in Air Canada's fleet, current fleet, except for the Boeing 737 Max 8 and the Airbus A220 300, of which the Max 8 I will get to check off my list when I go home from Barbados because they are starting to schedule. Air Canada 737 Max is on this rotation, so I can't wait for the trip report. I know you guys can't wait for the trip report, because that's going to be fun. New aircraft that I've, I've flown on it twice, and I'll discuss that a bit. But still, uh, Air Canada, I'm very mixed about this. Because on one side, I don't like Air Canada. On the other side, I love Air Canada. They're very, the, the experience, like the legroom, like the onboard experience, the service is very good. I felt they really lacked on an international six hour flight with nothing but drinks, not even a buy on board menu. Um, the flight attendants on the flight coming here the first time, the first ever trip report on this channel, were not the nicest. I, I didn't really like them. They were not the nicest to me. I'm sorry, but they weren't. Um, Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also flew the 767, 200, and 300 when they had those in their fleet. Um, yeah, sorry. Aside from that, uh, the flight attendants, they weren't very nice. But then on the way back, they were great. They gave me free food, they gave me a wrap, and they treated me like a king. So, I feel like this is kind of like, with any airline, you're going to have good and bad experiences. On the most hand, I've had pretty good experiences with Air Canada, especially in the lounge, even during COVID-19, Air Canada probably have 
the best lounge in North America, potentially even the world for COVID-19. Obviously, I haven't been to Europe uh, in a very long time, especially uh, a European lounge. And hopefully when I travel out of here, I will be able to go to the lounge. So you guys will also get to see that. So stay tuned for that. Everything was prepackaged. Food, they had great COVID-19 protocols, like precautions and everything. So it was all a really positive experience when it comes to that. Uh, Air Canada... Yeah, I... Hmm, I'm gonna have to think about this. They've, they, have ver they have nice food on board. I wouldn't say great. I wouldn't say Aeroflot and Air France level. But I would say they do have good. Uh, okay, transatlantic service. Mediocre. I'm sorry. It was mediocre. If you love Air Canada and Fly Air Canada transatlantic a lot, I thought when I flew to Rome and back from Milan, it was a very mediocre experience. They had one meal and it was just kind of bland. Whereas Air France, they gave us they gave us like a package. They gave us um, free free pillow, free blanket, and they like just such a great experience. But with Air Canada, I think it was a very mediocre experience. But on the better side, I do think Air Canada is a very good airline. So I think, from my personal experience, I'm going to give them. Here we are, going to put Air Canada up in A with <laughs> with the low-cost carrier. <laughs> Alright, next we have Air France. So, Air France, I've flown twice. I've flown on all the 777 variants that they have. The 200ER and the 300ER. Both round trip to Toronto. One way was on the 300ER, one way was on the 200ER. I have to say, regardless of the aircraft, it, w it was like Aeroflot, except the food wasn't as good. But they still gave us a nice package and something on a long haul flight, which I I remember like feeling like royalty was when they had, uh, um, what's it called? They had uh, pillows and blankets already ready in the economy class seat. Uh, I was a bit younger, so I don't remember the legroom, and I can't really judge that accurately right now. But I do remember we did sit in an exit row on the 200 ER on the way there. Or sorry, the 300 ER on the way there. Uh, on the way back, we sat in economy, and I just remember it being just an incredible experience also going to Europe for the first time. Uh, and the whole experience in Charles de Gaulle with Air France was, was just really great, and I would put it up there with, with, uh, with Aeroflot. Oh wow, it's very hard to see because I just realized I used a transparent image. Next, we have another airline I don't really remember that much. We have AirTran. I'm sorry, I realized what I did with the, um, yeah, with the, um, the stuff here. Yeah, it's not very visible, but, okay, so AirTran is, if you already don't know, it was bought by Southwest, and I got to fly them from Baltimore to Miami on the Boeing 717, which was an interesting experience. Once again, I don't remember much about it, but it didn't really stand out. I remember having a really fun time on it, and I remember it being better than US Airways, but not not really stand out. So since I can't say much, I will give it a B because I do remember it being a positive experience. Next, we have Air Canada Jets, which I've flown once on a substitute to Montreal which is their all business class, uh, I believe, fleet of A319s. So Air Canada currently have four aircraft in service, which is actually all they have. They have a fleet of four Airbus A319s, one of which I was able to fly to Montreal. This, I remember being an incredible experience and saying this was in, in business class, was the first time I flew it. Leave. I don't remember whether this was my mom or with my dad, but they gave us a meal on a, I think it was, it was one and a half hour flight from Toronto to Montreal, something like that, but I just remember it being an all in all great experience and I would love to have the opportunity to fly jets again, so, I mean, I can't really do anything except give them, give them an S, like, it's kind of like a private jet, like the British Airways A318, except it doesn't really fly transatlantic and it flies charters. All right, here we are, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put Air Canada Jet up there. 
Next, we have Air Transat. Oh boy. So Air Transat, I have flown their Airbus A321 and also their Airbus A33300. Uh, if you do, if you're a long time viewer slash subscriber of this channel or have gone and watched back some of my earlier videos, you may remember one of the thumbnails is me aboard an A321 on my way to Cancun. This was one of only two flights I've had with Air Transat and one was returning from Cancun on an A330-300 sorry 200 and on the way there it was nothing super special but on the way back <laughs> that was great i i have nothing to say they they gave me a meal and ironically i actually my dad bought me a model before we went to cancun and on the way back i took a picture with it on the tray table with the Air Transat A330 winglet in the background. I don't remember if it was the same registration, but I just remember that being really funny. So, all in all, Air Transat, they had incredible legroom and economy, especially towards the back of the aircraft. And I, the flight attendants treated me amazing. Sadly, I didn't get to go in the cockpit. And I remember it was the first time ever seeing an Air France A350, which was parked right next to us. Uh, just all in all great experience and nothing I can really do but put them up with A with actually their transatlantic competitor Air Canada. Next we have American Airlines. So nothing really unique about American for me. I, uh, I've flown American when I flew from Chicago to San Diego. One was on an, a 737-800 and one was actually on a Mad Dog, an MD-80. I don't remember if it was an MD-88 or an MD-83. One of the two, but I just, I remember it being, it was, it was mediocre and it was better than US Airways and I guess it didn't really stand out kind of like with uh, Air Canada Rouge and Air Tran and United Express, just up here. American Eagle was pretty much the same thing when I got to fly the E-135 or E-145 coming in from Toronto and on the way back at the CRJ-700. Yeah, I've, I've flown a bunch of weird stuff where it's like one aircraft one way and then another another because they actually, I think this was the year they swapped. Um, and yeah, I just, I remember it being uh, kind of the same as American. Next we have Eastern or what used to be Dynamic Airways. Uh, I flew this when it was Eastern back in, I think it was 2016, 14, some, some, something around that time. But uh, I remember this being a, it was a very positive experience. They didn't have in-flight entertainment because it wasn't working. It was a very outdated cabin. Uh, the flight attendants were super nice. And I remember this was my first time ever flying on Old Stumpy which is what I call the 767-200, if, uh, if you don't know. Uh, old Stumpy, uh, I'll just show you an image of... Um, so yeah, here's a little image of Old Stumpy. So I got to fly round... Uh, round trip to Punta Cana on Old Stumpy. I just love that name because it's kind of a, a little stumpy uh, aircraft. And I remember flying on the 767-200ER and it being just all in all a pretty good experience. And I, I don't really have any, any complaints about it. And I think it was better than, I think I wanna put it in between A and B, but I'm actually, I'm leaning towards towards an A with that experience. Next, oh my god, I'm immediately just putting this in S. So, Kootenai, Fly, Fly KLA or Fly Kootenai Lake Aviation uh, is a charter airline based in Nelson, BC, and long story short, I flew a plane, and that's all I can say, because that experience is just like nothing else, and I will actually have a very special trip report out on that very soon, as well as a Nix Aviation 2020 Rewind, which I'm still working on, which is just, you know, it'll be out eventually. Next, Air Canada Jazz. Yes, we have Air Canada uh, Jazz. 
I've flown everything in the Jazz fleet except when they used to have the CRJ uh, 700 or the CRJ 705, sorry. I was not able to fly the CRJ 700, but I've flown on the CRJ 200, which was a nightmare. And I've flown on the Q400, the most out of everything, and the, the Q200 and the when they had the Q300s and 100s. I've flown on all of those when they were in the fleet. All in all, for for short hops, I think it was pretty good. Uh, nothing really stands out. It's kind of the regional brand, and I, I think I can just put it up there. Sky Regional, I think, is... So, Sky Regional is the regional... It's Air Canada Express, but it operates the Embraer E-175s. If you know, it may have actually... It actually has collapsed by this point. Uh, but... It was actually, I've had a very positive experience. This was my first time ever flying in business class as well. When I uh, went to Saskatoon on the flight back, I got to fly on an E-175 in business class. And even in economy class, I think Sky Regional is a very good in-between between Air Canada and Air Canada Jazz, but very much like the main line and I would say a tiny bit better, but I'm gonna put them up with Air Canada. Next, we have Sunwing. So Sunwing, I, I don't really have anything uh, great or anything super bad to say about Sunwing. This was the first time I flew a Max 8 was with Sunwing when I flew to, I believe it was Old Eden. And uh, when I flew to Kyokoko, I was on an 800. So a total of four flights with Sunwing. And yeah, just kind of your irregular leader carrier. Next, we have this random image, which I'm just going to move that over here because we're not going to use whatever the hell this is. Uh, next we have Mainline United. Uh, with everything else over here, I think it, it's on that brand. I've flown the A319 and 737-800s uh, all from Toronto to Denver. And I believe once Denver to San Diego, but I remember only flying on the 800s and the A319s. But, oh no! Mediocre, kind of like with with American Airlines. I, I think if I flew on Delta, it would probably fit in the same category. Maybe American or United has improved, but I haven't flown them in a while. Uh, WestJet Encore, mediocre. Not nothing else to really say about that. WestJet itself, um, I would also say this is very mediocre. It, it's kind of just West, WestJet is, it has a certain feel to it, but nothing super special, nothing not super special as well. I've flown the, I've flown everything that was in their fleet up until they added the 757, which is the 737, 600, 700, uh, and actually I do not think I've flown on the 800, but yeah, I know, actually yes, I have flown on the 800, but yeah, nothing too special about WestJet. And yeah, so that is going to conclude today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to smack that like button. But before we end, let's go over the rankings. So up here in the, in, in or sorry, down here in the C tier, we have your, well, you have US Airways. In the B tier, we have Air Canada Rouge, United Express, Airtran, American Airlines, American Eagle, Air Canada, Jazz, Sunwing, United, WestJet Encore, and WestJet. Moving up to the A category, we have Air Canada, Flair Airlines, Airtran, Eastern, and Sky Regional, or Air Canada Express. And last, but definitely not least, in the S tier, we have Aeroflot, Air France, Air Canada Jets, Kootenai, Lake Aviation, and yeah, well, that's it. And we'll just put that guy down there so then we have something there. Hey everybody, so much for watching today's video. Be sure to comment down below your rankings for airlines that maybe you've flown. Go ahead and you can tell me all about your experiences. I will be sure to reply to every single comment that is, well, that is commented on today's video and all future videos as well. I will do my best and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. You'll notice that it's it's actually the next day if you don't already see, but 
Uh, yeah, I'm just a few minutes from releasing this video and I want to tell you go ahead and you can yeah come here and join the Nyx Aviation Discord. We have eight members and we'd love to see you here. Here's the link and it will also be in the description. Here you can have fun and I will do a whole video that tours the Discord along with other videos. You also get exclusive channel updates and yeah, it's gonna be really fun to have everybody here. Thank you very much once again and have, an, have a nice day. Thank you.